x, 2x plus 1 and 5x minus 4 are the first three terms of an arithmetic sequence. Find the value of x. Well, the first thing we have to realise is that arithmetic, another word for arithmetic, is linear. And the definition of an arithmetic sequence or a linear sequence is that each term has a common difference. So, for example, if we take the sequence 5, 7, 9, 11, dot, 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 which indicates that the sequence goes on forever, we can see that the difference between 5 and 7 is plus 2. The difference between 7 and 9 is plus 2. The difference between 9 and 11 is plus 2. So since there is a constant difference each time of 2, this must be an arithmetic sequence. Okay, so we don't actually know what the difference between each term is in this case, but we do know that whatever the difference is, it is the same each time. So the difference between term 1 and term 2 will be equal to the difference between term 2 and term 3. So if we write that out, term 2 minus term 1 must be equal to term 3 minus term 2. So the difference between term 2 and term 1 is equal to the difference between term 3 and term 2. So now since we've basically set up a formula, all we have to do now is substitute into our formula. And as with all formulas when we want to do substitution, we swap the letters for brackets and then we put our values inside of the brackets. So that's what we're going to do now. So term 2 become a set of brackets and I'm going to insert term 2 which is 2x plus 1 inside these brackets. So I get 2x plus 1. Next I have to remember I have a minus in my formula. So I have a minus. And then I want to replace a term 1 with a set of brackets and our actual value for term 1 which in this case is just an x. So I have brackets x brackets. Next in my formula is my equals. Very, very important to have my equal sign or it won't make any sense mathematically. Next in my formula I have term 3 which in this case is 5x minus 4. So again I swap term 3 with a set of brackets and I put in 5x minus 4. Next in my formula I have a minus, so I insert a minus, and next I have term 2, which again I swap with brackets and I insert term 2 which is 2x plus 1. So I have brackets, 2x plus 1 and brackets. So now I want to multiply out my brackets, but in the first case 2x plus 1, there's nothing actually stuck on to the front of the brackets, so I can just drop the brackets. So it just stays as 2x plus 1. Next, I have a minus stuck on to the front of my bracket, so it's going to be a minus multiplied by what's inside the bracket, which is an x, and a minus by an x just gives me minus x. Next, very, very important, I have to have my equal sign. Next, I have 5x minus 4, and again, there's nothing stuck onto the brackets, so I literally just drop the brackets and write 5x minus 4. And then I have a minus stuck onto this set of brackets, so it's going to be everything inside this brackets multiplied by the minus. So very, very important that I multiply both terms, the 2x and the plus 1, by the minus. So minus by 2x gives me minus 2x. 
and a minus multiplied by 1 is going to be minus 1. So the next thing is I have to group together my like terms. So I focus first of all on the left hand side of my equation and I see what can I put together. Well I have a 2x, a 1 and a minus x. So x's can go with x's and numbers can go with numbers. So all I can group together on the left hand side is the 2x and the minus x. And 2x minus x leaves me with x. And I have to remember to bring down the plus 1. Next I have my equal sign. And then I have to look at everything on the right hand side of my equals and see what I can group together. I have 5x minus 4 minus 2x minus 1. So again, I can put the x's with the x's and then separately I can put the numbers with the numbers. And also very important, I have to make sure I include the minus sign. So if a sign is stuck onto a number or a term, it belongs to that number or term. So this is minus 2x, not just 2x. So 5x minus 2x leaves me with 3x. And minus 4 minus 1 leaves me with minus 5. So now I've tidied up the left hand side of the equal sign and the right hand side as much as I can. Now I need to get the x on its own. I need to solve because this question asked me to find the value of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look and see which side has the most x's. And there are three x's on the right hand side and one x on the left hand side. So the three x is the biggest x value. So I want to keep the 3x where it is, so I want to get rid of the single x. So I'm going to minus x to the left hand side, so that that cancels out. If I minus x to the left, I must minus x to the right. So I still have 1, I can drop the plus because any number on its own is positive, equals 3x minus x is 2x, and then I have minus 5. Okay. So now I want to get the x on its own. So I have a 2 I have to get rid of. And I have a minus 5 I have to get rid of. Okay, so I'm just going to move that up there so I have a bit more space. Okay, so now I need to get rid of the 2 and the minus 5. And the rule is I always get rid of the single number first. And the opposite to minus 5 is plus 5. So I plus 5 to the right hand side of the equal sign, so that that cancels out, and I plus 5 to the left hand side. 1 plus 5 is 6, so 6 equals 2x. I now need to get the x on its own, and the 2 is stuck on to the x. So I have to divide by 2, and divide by 2 because two things stuck together in maths mean multiply, and the opposite of multiply is divide. Okay, and then I just have to work out 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So 3 equals x. Okay, so now I know that 3 is equal to x. And the second part of my question, um, which is not written in there, so ii, was to find the fourth term. So now I just have to write out each of my terms. So term 1 is x. So t1 equals x. And then I just substitute x equals 3 into this equation. So term 1 is simply 3. Next, I write out term 2, 2x plus 1. So term 2 equals 2x plus 1. Again, I substitute x equals to 3, or 3 equals x, in place of this x. So I have 2, bracket 3, plus 1. I have brackets 
because the 2 and the x are stuck together and 2 things stuck together are maths mean multiply. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by 3. And 2 multiplied by 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So the second term of my sequence is 7. Term 3 is 5x minus 4. So I write term 3 equals 5x minus 4. Again, I substitute x equals 3 in place of the x. And it becomes 5 bracket 3 minus 4. Because again, the 5 and the x are stuck together. Two th things stuck together in maths mean multiply. So it becomes 5 multiplied by 3, which is 15. And 15 minus 4 is 11. So the terms of my sequence so far, term 1 is 3, term 2 is 7, term 3 is 11. And we're trying to figure out what term 4 is, because that was the next part of the question. Okay, so to get from 3 to 7, it's plus 4. To get from 7 to 11, it's plus 4. So to get to our next term, it's going to also be plus 4. And 11 plus 4 is 15. So 15 must be our fourth term.